day of March 2018. My name is Ivan Buchanan, and I am your host. And my co-host, as always, Ron Hanks and Rhonda Moon Laner. Do we call you Rocky? Do we? For Bruce. Is she there? I don't hear her. I am here. <laughs> Late, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian! Adrian! <laughs> For those of you that call in, please watch your language, if you will. We try to keep it as, as clean as we can. Our call-in number is 347-857-1710. Again, that number, 347-857-1710. If you can't figure out, we've got a little inside joke going here. We'll get to that a little bit later here. Our guest tonight is Terry Sharp, the walking Marine. But before we get to him, I want to... Remind everyone that our website is thebuchananreport.com, thebuchananreport.com, where you can find all your your veterans' news alerts, and it is updated regularly. And it's all updated right now, like all except for I think I've got one or two more that just came in recently that I got to get to. You know, I was talking to a couple people here uh, today, and I, you know, I keep getting asked. You know, well, what is it that we do all, you know, because everybody hears, you know, we, we do all kinds of things. And I just think maybe now I'd, I haven't done it in a long time. I'll just go ahead and get it out there as far as some of the things that we do. And, and guys, if I miss something, chirp up here. Uh, what we just recently started doing one of the things we do now is we do free basic background checks you know know who you're dealing with so if you got somebody out there that you basically want to check out and give us uh don't give us a call but send us an email be more than happy to to uh get that information for you we uh also work on stolen valor issues uh, investigations having to do with, like, I've got more than one going on right now having to do with the uh, VA police corruption there. We do our veterans news alerts. We put that out through various uh, sources. We also have a YouTube uh, channel, The Buchanan Report, to where we're in the process of uh, all shows that we do now, like the show tonight, will within 24 hours be on the YouTube channel, and and uh, we're putting up all our past shows as well. Uh, so please go there and subscribe. That way, if if you subscribe, every time we post something, you'll uh, you'll be notified. Uh, but just a few days ago, I put up a there's a documentary on there now in addition to our shows and many other things. But a documentary, I haven't looked at it. Ron did, uh, having to do with Agent Orange on uh, out of Okinawa. Uh, I did see a little bit of it, very powerful, from what I understand. Uh, yes, on, our web, on our website, we have uh, suicide prevention numbers. Um, obviously, we do the radio share, having to do with VA issues. We assist vets in getting their appointments with the VHA when they're being ignored. We also assist vets that are having problems with the VA police. Uh, we assist whistleblowers in putting together their case for presentation. We also have whistleblowers, as everyone here knows, on our on the radio here, getting out, uh, you know, their issues. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Go to the Buchanan Report. Dot com. We we also have a store there. Um, we do all kinds of things. It takes time and money and can use all the help you guys are willing to give us out there. You can buy a hoodie, buy a T-shirt. These hoodies and T-shirts, they have slogans on them like women veteran, proud veteran, I support our veterans, stop veteran suicides, fix the VA, once a soldier, always. It just goes on and on and on. So, Go to the BuchananReport.com, go to the store uh, tab, take a look, um, buy a t-shirt, buy a hoodie. If you don't want to do that, you just want to make a donation, that would be great as well. Um, can sure use 
all the help you guys can give us. We do a lot of things. We do more than what I just said. I could really keep going on and on. Uh, we've got an attorney section there. If you, In fact, I just made a call to an attorney out of uh, Irvine who also has an office in Arizona for an individual that uh, has a veteran that has a uh, malpractice issue. And so uh, helping them get connected there as well. So we, have I forgotten anything else? I'm sure I have, but anything? No. Don't be afraid of the attorney page because, uh, you know, it's not going to cost you anything to talk to them. They'll, yep. The average attorney does, what, a half-hour consultation uh, mm-hmm. before they'll even say whether or not they'll take the case. So, uh, you know, there's your opportunity to find out. Yeah, and yeah. the key point on, on this is I've talked to each one of these attorneys, so um uh, verified that they do handle what they say they handle, et cetera, and so you don't need to worry about them trying to bill you or anything like that. So if you got a question, if you need an attorney or think you need one, um, go to that page, pick one, and give them a call. You can mention or not mention. It really doesn't matter. Uh, if you'd like, you know, that uh, you're coming from the BuchananReport.com, we don't get any vig off of it, so that's not necessary. Wish I did, Jamie. But that would be unethical for the attorneys. Uh, <laughs> well, funny to hell. Yeah. Anything else that I've, for- I've forgotten? I know I've forgotten a lot of other things. No, I think you're good. Rhonda, how are you feeling, or... Um, should I should well, I put the song back on? Uh huh. <laughs> the doctor told me take a muscle relaxer, so I did. Uh oh. I'll leave it at oh. that. Is that why you're a little late? Just a little <laughs> bit, like thirty seconds. Uh. Well, you're supposed to leave the fighting to the boys. It was the boys. Honestly, this guy came out of nowhere. I couldn't even tell you what happened. I thought they all landed on top of me, but no, all he did is push me into the well, rod iron I, fence I, and the ground. What I, think, what I think is funny, you're telling me I got a knot on my head, I got a gash here, my wrist hurts. I said, well, what's the worst thing? My butt hurts. <laughs> it did. It's bruised bad. You know, I, there was a nurse there. She stopped the bleeding. I was fine. I can't type. That is torture to me because you know I can't do anything if I can't type. Well, you got you have the old through. one finger hunting back. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Except this damn brace hits my mouse pad and sends me all over. I can't do anything. I'm good. Okay, well that was basically a little bit high, but. <laughs> That was basically it for me, but, you know, seriously, everyone listening out there can certainly use all the support uh, you're willing to give us, uh, do a lot of things out there. Also, we're getting ready to, uh, should I, I don't know if we're going to, we don't have a target date. I think it just got back because of, got pushed back a, yeah. a little bit because of Rocky here, you know, um, you know. She won, but a little bruised up, but we're going to start doing veteran news alerts on uh, Facebook Live and posting them on the YouTube channel as well. A lot of people just like to, we've got a couple, you know, uh, requests to put everything on YouTube. You know, a lot of people, they they just don't want to uh-huh. read, you know, like all our veterans alerts. They're on our website. You can go there and and click on them and, and uh, click on the title and it'll take you right right to it you can read it but a lot of people just want to listen so yes i, so, I did that today uh i went to youtube and and clicked on the uh agent orange in okinawa documentary and pretty much i was walking around doing things i had it turned up and i was listening to it and it scared me all over again just just from what i had read before you know what was going on and then listening to this guy uh, I don't know what to think. I'm, 
Well, you were in Okinawa yourself. That's the reason why. Yes, I was. Know. That's what's scaring right. me. Yeah. I met a gentleman today from Vietnam. He's a Vietnam vet. And he walked in, and he had uh, VA pajamas on. And I was like, you just came from VA, didn't you? Wow. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, did he escape or what? No, his <laughs> son was with him. <laughs> uh, okay. He oh. was just out wandering. Okay, Rocky, what do you got? I have absolutely nothing. I have been at the hospital all day long. I walked in the house literally 15 minutes ago. And huh. that's an excuse? Uh, sorry. I did do my posting, though, on the wow. way home. <laughs> you had to stop by yeah. your so, personal boxing trainer on the way. So I have to say... You know, I did my posting not on my profile, but others, and I did not get blocked today. So that's wow. a win. I know. Wow. Imagine that. They must have been too busy blocking everybody else. Right. <laughs> I know. You wow. know, it's not just us. I am talking to, like, um, Angela K. Kuhn that was on last week. So uh -huh. she sent me... She said, can you post this on our group? And I'm like, nope, I can't. I'm in jail. She's like, damn, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just me. Yeah. Well, uh, bringing up Angela, you know, second, third generation problems, uh -huh. uh, the uh, latest uh, issue of the American Legion publication. They finally done one on uh, Fort McClellan. Yeah, I saw really? that. Yeah. Most of it going through there, most of it we've already covered when we mm -hmm. had that gentleman on with his documentary, but there were a couple of things that, that struck me. I guess uh, the PCBs they were dumping have soaked so far, it's not just in the water system or the ground, it's gone so far it's into the tree bark and trees three miles away. Wow. You know, uh, and you have uh, people there of different economic means, uh, people that were raising pigs. They mm -hmm. had to get rid of them as if they were hazardous waste. That's how polluted they were. I, I raised mean, three. Imagine but I how many of them. them. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not going there. So. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that place, they trained 500,000 soldiers. It was also a prisoner of war camp. Now, how many prisoners mm -hmm. did, did we send back home to start this genetic slide? Uh, I don't know what else to call it. Yeah, you know, but if we, we had, there, if we had bases there, they've got the same, they got the problem there anyway. Yeah, you know. in their home country mm -hmm. as well. Some place right. like, well, we're talking World War II, though. This was before they even started that stuff. And still, even after that, uh, you know, presently right now, the VA does not recognize Fort McClellan as a cause for toxic exposure or health issues, claiming no of widespread contamination problems. Uh -huh. Yet they turned around and awarded the town of Anniston all that money to the civilian population. I mean, that's a contradiction in itself. And it is. I'll, I'll it's very you, clear that the that government... One documentary. Yeah, go ahead. The government does not feel that it has to do anything for the GIs because they're just that government issue. They'll do what they're told, et cetera. They can do what they want, and that's just the way it is, and that... Mm -hmm. To me, it is just very evident the way our government feels about that issue. Well, that's the thing that struck me in that Okinawa documentary. They made the flat statement in there that, okay, they've polluted this country, and, you know, it's costing mm -hmm. millions for this cleanup, and they do not feel that they're responsible for any of it anywhere. I mean, they have Honestly, though... 
how could they do the cleanup? It is down into the dirt. It's down into the water. It would cost who knows how to clean. I don't even think they could clean it up. Yep. Well, it it makes me wonder because some of the pictures they did show, uh, Kadena Air Base, uh, where the Uh B-52s were stored when they weren't in operation, uh, were, you know, along the outside perimeter, uh, chain link, and they each had their own containment area. The tails, you can see them sticking up out of there, but the rest was all pretty much covered up. But there was a, like, 15-foot strip between the fence and the road. I know, because mm-hmm. I drove down that road to get to my base. And all the families living across the road used that for their gardens. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they've just essentially poisoned everyone else at the same time. It's, it's and we crazy. know this happened. We've yes. talked to these people. I'm, they've told us yeah. we buried it. But it is in your soil. It is in your water system. How are you going to clean that up? Yeah, you can't. Even with the water table as as high as theirs, I mean, mean, there's not enough soil to absorb it and process that. And it doesn't stop with the veteran. It goes into their, so far, third generation. Who knows how much further it's going to go? Yes, this one uh, individual that was featured in the uh, article in the the Leeds magazine, she's on third generation, and her Mm -hmm. grandkids are still having problems similar to what she has, what her daughter has. I mean, yeah, it's just like, just like Agent Orange, and, you know, the two go hand in hand. So. Oh, yeah, they do. It just. You know, Listen and the that. fourth generation. Yep, fourth generation is so young now. I, some yep. of these things can lay dormant for forty years. Right. Well, it's in. You're talking DNA. It, that doesn't go mm-hmm. away. No, it doesn't. Well, that and what did they got that fish whatever thing from the Asian countries yeah. as well? The river uh-huh. fluke. What is it yes, called? So. River, river, river fluke. fluke. Yeah. That's and scary they still, it is, and they still don't test our veterans. They have to send the blood out to uh-huh. South Korea to get the test. And what's really stupid is, is that so many people are getting sick because of it, and civilians here, if you eat fish right. that come from Asia and all of that, you can get it, but there's a cure for it. So why won't the VA at least test our veterans for it. I, I don't understand. They have to recognize it. Right. That's and the they're not going to do right that. There. They yeah, need to recognize like that it's a reality yeah. that it's going to kill them. So. Yeah. Well, and you okay. look at all your desert storm people that came back with ailments they couldn't diagnose. Uh-huh. They're, the the easiest way it. out of it is to not recognize it. Deny it. Mm-hmm. So. Ignore it. Yep. What's that one book we interviewed the author? <laughs> Di- deny. Delay, hope deny. I hope yeah. you die. Yeah. Yeah. It's a classic it's case of that. the same story. Yes, yep. it is. Okay. My other one came out of today's uh, Grand Junction Daily Sentinel. The VA down in Grand Junction, through the use of a grant they got, has opened a new medical wellness center to deal with chronic pain. And what they're doing is they're trying to get people off of opioids and taking alternative medicines, acupuncture and, and whatnot that way, and other medicines as well as a, uh, an overall wellness issue, you know, mentally and, and everything else. Mm-hmm. So they're still making an effort. I, I sure hope it works because that is a they big are. problem. I am still working on one case. They contacted me. The gentleman veteran had been getting um, acupuncture and massage, uh-huh. and it was working. And then they wouldn't pay for it. 
so I sent him to the secretary's office. They have started his treatments again one time a week for acupuncture and massage, which is better than nothing. Yes. But it, it comes out of a whole nother fund. It's another one I'd never heard of. There are so many funds at every uh-huh. VA that nobody knows about. But it's almost what? like the Choice Care Program. I mean, yeah, it's out there, but nobody's accepting it because they won't mm-hmm. pay their bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a short note here on the BuchananReport.com. When you go on there, our, our home page there has veterans alerts, and and there are a lot of a uh, lot of articles posted here last week and this week. If you want uh, any of our listeners out there want to read about uh, the o- opioid issue, we've got quite a few articles on there. So, all right. Well, that is all the articles I had. I do have Terry Sharp waiting in the wings here. All right. Well, we want to take a short break before we bring uh, Terry Sharp on, uh, the walking uh, Marine. Uh, He's been on our show before. Um, He's got some great news. Can hardly wait for him to get it out there to our public. This is the Buchanan Report radio show. Uh, Don't forget, go to you, the Buchanan Report YouTube channel, subscribe. Uh, that way you'll get everything as we're posting it up there, and you can go on, take a look, and listen. We'll be back here in one, one moment with Terry Sharp, the walking better. Marine, rather, the walking Marine. Be back. <laughs> you are listening to the Buchanan Report radio show. Our guest tonight is Terry Sharp, better known as the walking Marine. Terry begins his next walk May 2nd, 2018. He is 67 years old, and he will lay the wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier on May 25th. He will walk in in through Thunder Alley on 26th May. He will be standing near the Lincoln Memorial Center on May 27th for Rolling Thunder. Hi, Terry. How are you tonight? I'm good. How about you? I made your announcement for you. Yeah, I know. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you cut the speech short. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I, so I sorry. ran in the last 30 seconds. I had to have an intro, so. <laughs> so tell us what's going on with you. Oh, I nothing think it's much great. right now. Just trying to stay warm down here. Of course, y'all got a little bit colder weather coming. But, uh, I'm looking forward to my second. I bet Where you are. Where are you at? Arizona. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> it was 80 today. Oh, gosh. Well, you're in, the, you're in a good place. This thing cold here. Yeah, well, I don't do cold. No, I, I'm having a hard time with it. But, uh, I'll bet no, you're I'm looking just... forward to May 2nd. That's huge. Yeah, that's be the number six. Probably yeah. be my last walk. I'm thinking I'm, I think I'm going to uh, give up the walking Marine and be the standing Marine. <laughs> well, and there you go. You've been the walking, corner. right? You've been walking 300 miles from your home in North Carolina to Washington, D.C., right? Yes. Yes, this would be the sixth time when I make it. Six. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, that's that's pretty amazing. So you're out there all by yourself. There's a lot of all, areas that there's nothing. Oh yes, yeah, it gets blanket in some, some mm-hmm. areas. But uh, I usually last year I had Ken Wilson me Wilson with me the whole way. Okay. Uh, he that he helps. lost his son. He lost he lost his son to suicide, and he he joined me on a complete walk last year. And done 200 miles of your port. Wow! So why don't you? How you somebody? Why don't we back up and and you tell us just exactly why you started doing this? Because I'm taking a look here at uh, something that uh, Rhonda put over to me, having to do with Rolling Thunder, and your wa- your current walk here is going to benefit for uh, charitable organizations. Tell us just exactly. 
why you started this. Well, actually, I first started in 2014. Uh, I was watching Greta Van Susteren on Fox News, and every night she was talking about this Marine locked up in Mexico, Sergeant Andrew Tamarisi. And the more I watched it, the matter I got, because they left him locked up down there for making a wrong turn. Right. Yep. So I just I told my wife one, one night, I'm going to walk to Washington, D.C. She looked at me kind of funny, you know. I said, yeah, right. I said, well, I am. I'm in it. And about a, a week later, I walked out the house and down the road with my flag and a pack on. And, uh, Did she let you back in the house when you were done? Yeah, she let me back. And one week later, I turned around and walked out the door and done it again. (laughs) I walked twice. Wow. I was the beginning of it. And then the third time, fourth time, the fifth time, I had suicide, you know, people, uh, suicide awareness in there. And and, uh, so I was kind of stuck with that. Of course, this year I'm adding homeless veterans to bring awareness to on this trip. Uh, it seems to do well to get, I get a lot, I get some good publicity, so it gets the word out. And all, right. I, all I do is, is try to bring awareness. You know, I, I don't have the answers to the problems, you know. But I want everybody to know it that's going on, that we're losing 22 plus veterans every day, seven days a week, over 660 a month plus. You know, and we can save one or two somewhere along the line. We got to. And by by getting out there on the road and, and making people aware, somewhere down the line we're gonna save one or two. So uh, yeah, that makes it all worth worthwhile. That's why I do it. Uh, well, you you talk about standing, Terry. Have you had the opportunity to meet Tim Chambers, Marine Sergeant? Oh yeah, I met him last year. Oh right. I'll be close to him this year. I'll be on I would be right on the end of the bridge. He'll be up a little bit further ahead of me. Uh-huh. I was on the other end of the bridge last year. I stood up and a whole all five hundred thousand motorcycles would come by me. I thought that was gonna never go in day. But I I do stands I do stands and when it gets warm I stand. You know, I uh-huh. go to cities and get at busy intersections with my kneeling soldier and my flags and signs. And I'll stand up six, eight hours. I have stood for 24, uh, 22, 23 hours I stood one time. And that, that, of course, I won't do that again. <laughs> that's that's hard. That's terrible. I'll but, bet. You know, I, used, I used to get six, you know, four, six, eight hours at a busy intersection in a town with my, my signs and my kneeling soldier and flags so, to bring awareness. And, right. When I'm not walking. Yeah, and you're pretty look. easy to find. Go ahead. Yeah, just look, look for the flag. Yeah, I'm well, taking Ivan, year, Ivan here. I'm, I'm taking a look here at the, uh, the four organizations here um, that'll be benefiting. That's the Veterans on Patrol, Bravo Base That's Camp Conklin, Arizona. Right out of, yeah. out of darkness, Danville, Stars Stripes. And pause. The Rockingham County Veterans Coalition, Veterans Food Pantry. You know, I'm sure they're all good causes, and there's tons of other good causes out there. But the one that's really kind of special to us is at Camp Conklin. Uh, you know, it's it's local there to you know uh, to us in in Arizona, and the work being done out of there, we know firsthand. You know. Yeah, and, I was there last year, so. Right. Thank you. I came to visit with uh, the Camp Conklin is named after uh, uh, Kyle Vardy, her son. Right. Uh, that he well, how, how, named. how is this, how's the money thing working here? Is it just a straight donation? Are people pledging for every mile you walk? They'll donate X amount of dollars. How, how is this working? Okay, I, I started at six. It's about 600,000 steps in 300 miles. So you can buy a step for a penny, one cent. Of course, you know, it would be nice if you go ahead and buy 500 steps for $5. Uh, and we have a donation site on walkingmarine.com. 
and the Facebook page, The Walking Marine, on Facebook. We have donation sites there where you can donate. Uh, we also have a 501c3. I'm on the, on the 501c3, so we can take uh, donations from businesses or corporations or people that need a tax write-off. We have a number for that. Uh, I'm hoping we can sell all 600,000 steps plus. And plus at the end of the after the end of the walk, all the money that has been donated will be collected up and and divvied out to all four organizations. Uh, that's that's the plan. Yeah, we've got your information here, Rhonda. Are you getting that out, or I assume you already have on on yes, our? Yes, I already um, have. You with your one ha- good hand there. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I can move my fingers. <laughs> That's all it takes for what? a mouse. <laughs> what happened to you? Oh, <laughs> some guy just came out of nowhere. Lion Lion car. Hit you with a car? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <was not> funny. <laughs> it felt like it, but. <laughs> well, Wrong somebody place. got. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was relaxing with her husband, and you know how sometimes people get unruly, and one thing led uh, to another. So, um, I kind of have no filter between my brain and my mouth. Oh, uh, that's that's going to cause you problems. <laughs> so I learned that can get that can get you in trouble. Yes, it can. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, this year, I'm, every year I carry flags with me, two of them, the American flag always. The, the, sec, the, the second flag this year will be the thin blue line flag, American flag. Yes. Um, for the law enforcement. Yeah, it gets a little right. dicey. Now. I, cur- I, I carried the Christian flag one year, and I got dicey. Uh, even carrying the American flag is dicey. But, uh, oh, I'm tell me about blue. it. The thin blue yeah. line and the American flag with me this time, so that be it, goes. <laughs> it gets a little bit rough as we get no further north. Yeah, I'll bet. On that note there, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we'll be coming in back into our final segment. We're speaking with Terry Sharp Sharp, the walking marine. We'll be back here in just one moment. <laughs> You are listening to the Buchanan Report Radio Show. So, Terry, can you get your contact information out there? How can people find you? How can they donate to these causes? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the easiest way is your Facebook is The Walking Marine. Join Facebook. It doesn't cost you anything. Just join it. I need all the members I can get the word out. And TheWalkingMarine.com on the web. Uh, both of those have a donation site. Uh, okay. I really need to get the people involved. And when I start May 2nd, then the Facebook page every day will be, you know, a video in the morning when I start and maybe one during the day, you know, then at the end of the day, where I'm at and what's going on or what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, it surprised me that the other day I posted something about the 22-plus veterans per day that commit suicide. And a friend of mine, not just a Facebook friend, I mean, I know her from church and she's local and she was not aware of that statistic. It it's amazing. Me. It's yeah. amazing how many people are not. And that's what I do. That's my main goal. That's what I do. <laughs> Let them know 22 plus veterans of uh, men and women are taking their lives every day. So. Exactly. Exactly. More people have died from suicide than they yeah. have yeah. over in Afghanistan or Iraq. Oh, and people well, yeah. still 19, don't know that. Uh, 1999 was a little 50, to now 53, a little 5,300 combat wounded or dead deaths. In 1999 to now, 128,000 plus deaths and suicides. Yeah, I like twice the way that you say. I, I like the way that you say that twenty-two plus because 
that yes. figure is not anywhere close to being accurate. There's many states that don't no. even doesn't even report no. those statistics, no. and there's other variables that uh, that just it obviously well, you know, you're higher. Well, some 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 places, uh, some medical examiners, only if if a veteran takes a, takes all his pills, he's got from the VA. They're gonna call it an mm-hmm. overdose. Well, they right. call it suicide. That's an overdose. Well, sure it is, but he had to take two hundred pills. That's kind of hard. It's hard to say that's an accidental overdose. A suicide right. by a pill, not by a gun. By a pill. And then we have the guys on the other side that the VA is saying, um, I know you're in pain, but I'm going to stop your opioid, and yeah, you're not yeah. going to get it back. And they nope, don't yep. taper. They, it's a huge issue. It's just not covered well. They don't no, offer an alternative or, or anything that mm-hmm. way. That's why I brought up this thing uh, with the, the Western Slope VA and their new medical center they've got open. Do you have anything like that down there, Rhonda? Not that I've seen. Well, you if, know, you I... go, if you go to the BuchananReport.com, one of the articles uh-huh. in the Veteran Alerts talks about, you know, the VA is now incorporating acupuncture, you know, into, you know, supposedly helping with the opioid you right. know, issue. I, I don't. I really I don't know that much about acupuncture. I don't know if this is a real possibility or or not. So I can't speak to it. But um, I just really find it quite odd, frankly. Well, I have never tried acupuncture, but I do. I I've worked on it. Like I said when we started the show, I've been working on this case for six months that the veteran was getting acupuncture and massage through one of the off programs. And then all of a sudden they stopped that and it took me getting a hold of the secretary's office to get him treated once a week. Right. So it's just like hyperbaric oxygen, you know, there's other countries that have been using it for years and we're not, uh, Acupuncture has been around for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And the only reason it wasn't really accepted in the United States, I remember back in the 70s when they were trying to come in, was they would not tell the AMA board or AMA doctors how they were doing it. You know, so they disavowed them. Well, I don't know what they would. Would acupuncture help out people with their THC addiction? You know, I mean, we know it's a gateway drug, right? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've seen it help. I, I saw that, Jeff. I've seen it help uh, <laughs> hearing problems, back problems. Right. You know, uh, so, it, yeah, it does have a benefit. But, again, THC or mar- medical marijuana in Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, Oregon is legal. But Utah, Idaho, and who, you know, many other states is not. So if you're in pain, are you supposed to stay in your medical marijuana state and never leave? Because well, if you but if you're, over, a, if you're a veteran, you still got to be careful with that, even if you're in a state that is legal right. for it. So. Exactly. You know, right. that they'll talk to you. you know, there's these foggy rules out there that depends on what they want to do. And we know at the VA that it depends on your director. Right. My and director, maybe. Uh huh. And there's so many of them. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah, well, for, as far as I'm concerned, this issue having to do with the 22 plus, and I'm going to incorporate that. From now on, when I talk, because I—that's the first time I've heard it, and I really, I, I really think it—it it really qualifies the situation. But the problem, is, from what, as I see it, based on the people that we've had on the show, like the tombs, et cetera, uh, et cetera, uh-huh. you know, it comes down to a matter of the way, you know, these counselors think. 
you know, and uh, they don't seem to be very tolerant. In fact, some places they don't even have enough personnel, not because there's not, you know, counselors out there. There's tons of them qualified. The VA just doesn't want to hire them. I think San Diego is one of the places, you know, a show that we yeah. did about a year and a half ago. You know, mm-hmm. it, it just seems like they, they, they're not serious about it uh, to me. I, well, what, what, you know, are, what are your gets, thoughts? What are your thoughts there, Mr. Walker Marine? Well, the VA can spend millions and millions of dollars for artwork to put on the damn wall. <laughs> there you I go. Can buy a whole, I can buy a whole lot of councils for that. Oh, yep. And I can, yes, I, I can draw. I'll draw a picture on the damn wall for them. <laughs> That's what upsets Sorry. me about the whole deal. That they spend millions and millions of dollars to put artwork up. And how many people can you hire to help people within the system for that kind of money? A lot. Yeah. If you don't pay them, overpay them a lot. You know. I know some uh, graffiti artists that do some excellent work for a lot less money. There you go. You know, things like that just that kind of ticks me off a little bit. When, when yeah. I see it, but I mean, it well, looks nice. Don't get me wrong, yeah. boy. My, my VA clinic over there, brand new. That thing's bigger than the hospital. Uh-huh. It's got yeah. about. A, Fifty acre, fifty acre parking lot now, but that's nice compared to what we had. But inside, it got artwork everywhere. I mean, it's a pretty place. But that cost a lot of money to put that up. Yeah. They could have used well, that I, a little bit better. Yeah, they with could. Hiring people. I gotta ask, Terry. I saw your uh, the announcement on Facebook on a blurb that you were going to be able to do this during a memorial weekend services I consider it myself an honor being presented to you and I say congratulations how did this come about do you think all your walks made uh, made you noticeable or did someone else push these Uh, buttons to actually have that uh, happen somebody uh, the woman who is the the CEO of the Pauls Star Stripes and Pauls who Uh I'm under 501c3 she contacted Arthur uh, National Cemetery, mm-hmm. and uh, and he got me put get me put on that day, May twenty fifth. I should be walking into Washington D.C. that day anyway. Right. But I got cha- I got to change clothes. I got to change clothes, but I'll have it all ready. But that, you know, that was a great honor. That's a great honor. Yeah, I yes, it is. Uh, I'm thrilled about that. Um, All I can say about it is congratulations. You deserve it. You you worked hard for it. Yeah, the question that Appreciate I have that. on uh, on this walk is this: is when you start the walk or or at the end of the walk, do you have any uh, re- any representatives from any of these four organizations going to be there? Any I'm going to walk? Oh, yeah. Anybody going to walk with you? You know, through this? Oh yeah, I'll have somebody. Along the way, walk a ways, you know. So maybe some some people come out on the weekend, you know, when they got the weekend off work. Most people work, so you know they can't walk during the weekday. <laughs> so uh, right, it'll be people to come out on the weekends. And when I go through towns, you know, uh, you, if you use it on the weekend, you, you get more people during the week, like yeah. three people work. And the ones that are retired, you can't get them out of the house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, let me. It's as, not, Especially not to walk. <laughs> How I visualize this, and I'd like to see it turn into remember old Forrest Gump there when he started running all over the U.S. Yeah. there? Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. <laughs> on, we, we need some participation here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it will. I mean, I, people participate. You know, like say, I may, I've had one, uh, Ken Wilson walked with me the whole way yes, last year, 300 miles, and mm-hmm. the year before he walked. 200 miles of the way with me. But this year he had to go back to work, so he he had to walk on the weekend now. I could walk uh, to the you know, restaurant, have, but that'd be about it. <laughs> oh, my feet would leave me right now if it could, I tell you. They dreading it already. It's two months away. But, you know, yep. like the first four, first four days, I won't be far from home, so I'll just come back home every, every eat after, after every walk in the evening. And then go back out the next morning, but after that I'm on my own. Up to the up to the hills of Virginia. 
but it's, it should be okay. You got a lot of people, you know, I've done it five times before, so I've got a lot of friends now up through the up 29. And a lot of organizations that put me up in the motel there. And they come out and give me something to eat. Uh, it's great. I mean, I, I enjoy the walk, but not really enjoy it. I just enjoy when the day is over with. It's, it's tough. It's getting harder in old feet. But, uh, I'll bet. I'll imagine. I know my but wife would give me 20 bucks and tell me to keep going. <laughs> Uh, She'd pay uh, your whole way if he would go. <laughs> and not come back. Yeah. 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 Well, he's walking, ain't he? We're running out of it's time expensive. here. Any any final thoughts or comments here, Terry? No, the only thing I wish is, like say, everybody check out the Facebook page and the web page and help me spread the word, bring awareness of the 22-plus veterans. That's taking their lives today. Uh, it's just a simple thing. All you got to do is say, hey, did you know 22 plus veterans are taking their life today? And that starts people to think. And yeah. then they'll look, they'll look at, they got a veteran in their family. They'll start looking at them. You say, well, are you all right? You know, talking to them, mm-hmm. uh, checking on them. Things like that can can slow it up or stop some of them. Because some of them you can bring back yeah. from the edges, and some of them you're not going to bring them back. I don't care what you do. But you can save some. We can save some. We're not going to save them yes, all. Yes, we can. You know, that's all. The mission is zero. But, you know, that's – don't be naive about that. My mission is just one. If I just save one, my mission is – I've, I've completed the mission. If I save one. Uh-huh. Well, and you, that is commendable. You've done more that's than that, thing. obviously. But, uh, all I ask, like I say, is help me out a little bit. You know, make people aware. It's a simple thing. All you got to do is 22 plus veterans. Remember, yep. it takes your life today. All right, and Terry, you are wanna, easy to find. Want to thank you for well, coming on that. here. Get the word out to your people that uh, this show is going to be on the Buchanan Report YouTube channel. So. Uh, point everybody over there to uh, listen to it and uh, sure. sub- subscribe to it, and that'll help get the word out. We'll be doing on our end, you know, everything we can, you know, to get the word Appreciate out it. through all our sources, et cetera. Uh, again, I want to thank you for coming on, Terry. I'm going to put you in the blue room here. You can listen to the rest of the show while we sign off. And thank you very much. He's in the blue room now. And uh, any final comments by you, Rhonda? Ron, I yeah, I, I'm I personally am really thankful. I've I've never heard that now. Now I have, and that, that's I'm gonna when I hear it when I speak about it. It's 22 plus because 22 is just has always just bothered me. It's more than 20. Well, yes. Last year they said it was 20. Mm-hmm. That was the VA's new number. But mm. we know that there are states, there's only 22 of them that give their numbers to that number. So there's, what, 28 that don't? So it's definitely 22 plus. You can yeah. find The Walking Marine at the walking or at walkingmarine.com or The Walking Marine on Facebook. I did see a thing on uh, on the internet the other day. They're working on making the suicide hotline a three number dial proposition, but they've got to get permission from Congress. So that whole thing's blown out of the water. I don't know. I was going to say I don't think that's going to make a difference. Yeah, yeah but even if they do won't. that, you don't answer you the st- call. It won't. You still have to have people that answer. You know the phone, and and then deal with the party calling in properly, not like yeah. telling them to get a gun. And you know, I mean, remember when that came out a few weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, you know, anybody that goes to the VA, you're very guarded in what you say because what you say can be twisted in so many different ways. Mhm. 
they're never going to get veterans to talk to them one-on-one as long as it just keeps going the way it is. No, yeah, but I've I talked to I've talked to many so veterans. Bad. I've talked to many veterans that that has said, you know, fifteen, twenty years ago, yeah, they had mm-hmm. their problems, but nothing like what the problems are now. Mm-hmm. There may have been the problems. There may have been the same type of problems, but not the amount of problems that are going on now. Yeah. There are so many veterans that will not go to the VA, period. Doesn't matter what's going on, they're not going to go there. And no matter what I say or you say, they're not going to do it. Remember when all the stories came out, um, what's the main hospital they all go to in Washington, D.C. when they come back from overseas? I don't remember oh, the yeah. name. But they had the rats and the, the dripping walls. Well, when these guys are um, in a trauma, they've been shot, and they're sent back to the States, and they're put in a hospital where the rats are coming and eating their food, or the ceiling is falling in on top of them. Can you blame them? Yeah. They're dealing with enough trauma without that. Yeah. Walter Reed, is that who you're trying to think? Walter that Reed. That is it. <laughs> yes, you have it. Well, didn't it? Sometimes the president, what is it, uh, Obama and, and Bush, they, they go there and get checked out at times. I mean. Sure, they do. Why would they? They have their own medical staff. <laughs> Well, I I remember on TV, I I forget what president it was that was there that was checked out for something or whatever. I forget which one. You don't even have to have a health care mm-hmm. program like we do. No, no. Well, they don't even have a health care program like you got. Nope. Just like all your officers, you know. I, my attorney is West Point graduate yep. told me. He was totally oblivious to all of this stuff going on. Um, you know, with the with the VA, and he says when you reach a certain level, you you, you know you yeah, have other medical care, um, other right. avenues available to you. Well, I just opened up a story from CNN, and if people are reading what they're saying, that might be the problem. Remember the um, Europe trip that his wife and her friends went on. So they are now posting that Secretary Shulkin has repaid several thousand dollars towards some of the travel costs of that trip. I thought you didn't have any more articles. I didn't. I just clicked on a link. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't take me long. I, I can always find something. Okay, yeah. well, they, I'll butt in here before this. you do. <laughs> and I'd like to tell Terry, thank you for coming on, Terry. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Boy, that's a lot of trips up and down that highway. Yes, it especially, is. Man. Especially in the hills there. Do you have a quotable quote for tonight? And it has to do with humor. A person without a sense of humor is like a wagon without springs. It's jolted by every pebble in the road. (laughs) That's from Henry Ward Beecher, and I'm sure Terry's had a chance to experience that walking down the road. Uh, Yes, I definitely. Adrian! (laughs) (laughs) No, that, that doesn't... Qualify for the fall on your foot. (laughs) (laughs) All right. This is the Buchanan Report radio show. I want to thank everybody for coming by this evening. We've got another great show coming up next Tuesday. Keith Hansford having to do with what I think is one heck of a revelation having to do with uh, the Bay Pines incident. Uh, he's a whistleblower. Um, wait till you hear his story. Uh, it's unbelievable. 
Uh, well, at this point, it, it is believable. I was going to say, unbelievable uh, is a big word. That's why the investigations we're doing here, Rob O'Neill, there's various other uh, current former uh, law enforcement officers. But uh, good show coming on next week. Don't forget to go to the Buchanan Report YouTube channel. This show, along with all of our past shows, we're uploading there. But specifically this show, go there, listen to it. Um, great having having Terry Sharp on, and uh, good luck to you out there. Um, hopefully, I know he's still listening because I can see he's on the board. Uh, while he's doing his walk, uh, maybe we could uh, get him on, you know, and he can give yeah. us a, a five minute uh, uh, rundown on how things are are going and. Love to have that happen, Terry, so keep that in the back of your mind. 